Over the years on the channel, I've talked a lot about setting scenes up. Today, we're gonna to be setting a scene up specifically for a game that I'm running. This is gonna be a little bit of a vlog style video where I just set up the scene that I'm gonna be needing for my game in a few days. And I'll kind of explain why I do some little things here and there uh, and just let you go along for the ride. So let's jump into it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society, and I'm excited to do a vlog style video today because I've talked a lot, like I said in the intro, about setting scenes up, but there's nothing like setting a scene up specifically for a game. So I don't think that there's gonna be any specific like tricks or tips in this video. I'm just gonna kind of go through my process and explain why I make some of the choices that I make. Editor side note, that is literally the definition of a tip or a trick. So I'm not exactly sure what I meant there, but I will say this is a Garmin video, so I'm gonna talk a lot and I'm gonna give tips and tricks. So past Garmin, I don't know what he was talking about. And hopefully it's an enjoyable thing for you to see how I set up terrain for an actual game that I'm going to be running. So I don't need to say anything else. Let's just dive in. So as a quick heads up, while I'm setting up my cliff stackers, I'm just gonna give you a little insight into what the session I'm gonna be running this week is. My players have been tracking a missing person and their last known location was in a warehouse that was being held by a group of mercenaries called the South Swamp Rangers. Now, the one thing that my players know is that these mercenaries kidnapped the person they're looking for. And so now what they're trying to do is trace them back to this warehouse and see if they can find the person they are seeking. For this whole thing, I need to set up the outside of the warehouse. I need to set up some inside parts of the warehouse as well. So we're gonna get into that a little later in the video, but the anchoring block for the outside is gonna be this cliff stacker wall because I said that this was a warehouse. What I didn't say was that it was a warehouse carved out of a cave. The one thing that I will say is to make sure that the cave mouth is nice and dark and it gives the appearance from the front side that there is a dark cave inside. I needed to make sure that it looked dark back behind my cave entrance. So the way that I did that was by crafting an incredibly detailed piece of terrain. I literally just pulled out this piece of cardboard, kind of rounded it, taped a little piece onto the back to make sure that it stood up straight and then painted the inside black. And that's absolutely perfect for what I need to get the visual that I wanted across. It's not story craft society if I don't craft something for the build. The next thing that I need to do is start filling out the external part of the scene. So another quick time lapse will happen and you'll get to see all of what I'm gonna do with that. So once I added all of the scatter pieces, like the buildings, the fencing, the trees, all of the little just bits and bobs that make the whole thing come to life, I'm really pleased with how this is going to work, look, how impressive it feels. All of the verticality is really good. The ability for the players to like climb up and interact with the scene is so, so, so important. And that leads directly to what I want this encounter to be. Sure, they could run in absolutely headstrong and just bully their way in through the front door. But the really important stuff is that this tower way up here, where there is definitely going to be a guard on post, there's no way to get to it from the outside. You have to go inside to climb the ladder to get up to it. So what that means is, is if they run in, they're gonna alert basically the entire rest of this mercenary warehouse. So it encourages them to be smart. It encourages them to be tactical and find a way to get in. And what's so great about my players in particular is that I, I'm pretty sure that this will happen. It will also lead to a lot of dialogue and role playing as the characters, not just my players, but the characters try to figure out what the best way to go about approaching a scene like this is. But with that said, I love how this turned out. It's definitely the type of thing where if a combat were to happen here, I'm assuming that one won't, but if one were to happen here, it would definitely create drama because of positioning and all that sort of thing. All right, let's move on to what's actually inside of the warehouse. 
So to get the inside of the warehouse built, I'm gonna pull out these felt boards that I made. These are actually just very, very simple crafts. It's just a piece of foam core that I got from the dollar store. And then I glued down a piece of white felt on top of it. One mistake that I made was I made these in white felt. I think I would have preferred to have made them in like brown felt or green felt, something that just looks a touch closer to grass or dirt, but that is just me being nitpicky. But with that said, I now have this. So what this, Oh gosh, so, so what this allows me to do is pick this up and take it out of the room. So when I'm ready for my players to see it, I'll be able to wheel this out and put it onto the table. But until that point, it can stay successfully hidden. Little piece of grass on the board. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna just dive into setting up this warehouse. Let's see where we get. The best way that I can explain what I'm doing with my dungeon tiles at this stage in like adventure site planning is just I'm playing. I mean, that's a very simple way to say it, but it's really true. I'm setting out the pieces in a way that I think look nice. I'm also trying to think about the vision of the movie that I would like to have my players be in, right? So I'm setting the scene for that. So I'll tell you the two major things that I thought about when I was setting this particular warehouse up. The first one was elevation. I wanted a sense of verticality to the inside of this warehouse. Specifically what I mean by that is I don't want everything on a flat single layer because if a fight breaks out inside here, that stops the players from having to think about how do I get up to that next level or how do I get over to deal with this archer or this caster that's up on a tier above me or am I gonna jump down on them if they're below me? And then the second thing that I think about is exploration. If they don't get into a combat encounter in this particular warehouse and they're just exploring, whether that's like stealthy kind of exploring or whether it's just exploring, maybe they persuade their way in. I, I don't know how they're gonna solve this problem yet. That's none of my concern. I'm just going to set up the encounter and they'll deal with it the way they deal with it. But I wanted a lot of doors so that they had to make choices about where they'd go and they'd have to prioritize. And then also the thing that I did on purpose was I put the cells in the farthest back corner of the warehouse. So that encourages my players to travel all the way from the entrance to the back part. They can explore this part of the warehouse if they want to, but the cells, they're looking for a missing person, uh, is back in the back part. So they have to go as far into the warehouse as possible. I think that's good dungeon design. A reasonable person, whether a character in a fantasy game or not, is gonna be thinking about self-preservation. I'm not gonna go any deeper into this warehouse full of mercenaries than I have to. In this particular situation, I have forced their hand. They must go all the way in if they want to find their quarry. I debated giving spoilers right here, but I don't think I can, just in case it takes them longer to get through this than I was thinking. They enjoy watching the videos, so I'll hold off on the spoilers for now. So then the next thing I have to do is I have to populate this whole thing with scatter terrain. That's gonna be simple, it's a warehouse. It's gonna be lots of crates and boxes. It's going to be a lot of figuring out exactly where people can walk and creating paths that are interesting so that it's not just a big wide open space. So let's jump into that. All right, so with all of the final bits of scatter terrain put in place, I just couldn't be more happy with how this warehouse turned out. I mean, it feels like a warehouse, it's cluttered, it's got little organized piles of things and I think it will be more than exciting for my players to get to explore. As far as my thought process for laying out the individual scatter terrain, I tried to make semi-cohesive piles of things, like there's tables here, and there's benches here, and there's seats over here, and there's chests up here, and weapon racks over here, and kegs over here. I tried to make it as sensible as possible, because again, I would think that a mercenary company's warehouse would be organized in a way that would help them to get to stuff if they needed to sell it. I also liked the idea that it was just a little bit haphazard to imply that bit of did they get these goods legally or illegally? That's always a good mystery. But with that said, that's the general idea of this setup. 
I hope that this is gonna last me more than one session. I ideally would like to see it last two sessions, but we'll certainly see. But that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this kind of vlog style thing. This is just kind of a day in the life of my DM prepping, specifically the terrain part of it. If you'd be interested in seeing other parts of my DM prepping, definitely leave me a comment down below and let me know that because I would certainly love to show off how I build my NPCs or do the story planning. But thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, do all of the YouTube stuff. The number one way that you can help a small YouTube channel out is to share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it. For all of you that do that, I can't thank you enough, but that's gonna be it until next week. So until next week, I'll be seeing you.